Wasn't that a great time of praise and worship? Man, thank you, praise team. Awesome job. And man, this is a, a, a suitable day to be praising the Lord. Amen. As we're celebrating uh, Palm Sunday and looking forward to what God has for us today. Now, many of you may be wondering, why in the world is he sitting on the steps getting ready to preach? Well, first and foremost, understand that I'm not going to be able to stay here the whole time because for me to sit and preach would almost be, uh, it's impossible. But if you're, if you're new to joining us here at First Baptist West, then you, you need to know that on the first Sunday of every month, I usually sit down after the praise time is over, and, and I sit down and I bring all the kids uh, down front with me in both of the services, and uh, uh, they sit around me and I have a little time uh, with them. Well, I didn't want to uh, skip that today. So we're going to have just a little bit of time with our kids. And so if, if the kids are watching, and I, I pray they are, I pray just not for today, but every Sunday that we're uh, live streaming at, and you're at home or wherever you are, that your kids are, are joining in with you because there's nothing greater than a family praising Jesus together. Amen. So what I'm going to do, though, is if, if your kids are there, I'm going to ask if you would send them down on the floor around the television and kind of let me feel that they're actually coming down with me uh, because it is kind of awkward having a children's time sitting on the stage and nobody here uh, with me. I, I thought about getting the praise team to sit down here, but I didn't think any of them would want to do that. But uh, we're going to take just a few moments with that. And I even had a family tell me that their girls were going to go sit out at, on their steps at their house so that they could feel like they're sitting on the steps. So I hope they're doing I told them I would mention them. So I hope they're doing that. So anyway, what I wanted to do today, talk to the kids a few minutes about uh, something back when I was a kid. There was this thing, and I, I believe I was probably in about the fourth grade, fifth grade. There was this thing that came out, and it was called the Pet Rock. And I think we have a picture of the Pet Rocks for you to look at. Now, what happened was this guy devised a great idea that he was going to go down to Mexico, and he's going to get a lot of rocks. And he's going to smooth them out and he's going to put them in the crate. You see there's a box, looks like an animal is in it that's a pet. And there's uh, the, the hay there, a little straw, and, and a rock. And even an instruction booklet that you see there. And so what this guy would do is he would sell pet rocks. Now those pets couldn't do anything. They were literally a rock. Now this guy sold over a million of those for $4 a piece in 1970. Five or 76, I guess. Uh, but everybody bought those pet rocks. They'd only lasted about a year or so, but now I've noticed they're coming back. So I wanted to show the kids what I used to see when I was a kid. But what I want to do now is I want to show you another rock. I have a rock here, and this uh, could possibly be a talking rock. Now, it's not a pet rock. I'm not selling these for any reason whatsoever. As a matter of fact, I picked this one up in, uh, in the back area of our church. Uh, so I thought, well, I need one today, so I picked it up. But this is a talking rock. Now, uh, notice that I said that it was a possibly a talking rock. Now, what I'm wanting to refer to here is that in my scripture today that I'm going to be preaching, Jesus is coming in to Jerusalem, and the people are yelling, Hosanna, Hosanna, and and they, they talked to him about making people be quiet. And we're going to share that. And then Jesus said that if people were to be quiet, that even the rocks would cry out. So what I'm going to be talking about today is this is not a talking rock, but it has the possibility to talk. It has a possibility to praise the Lord. And so today we're going to be talking about how we are to be praising the Lord and how these rocks could possibly cry out. So we're not selling these rocks. If every time you look at a rock now, I want you to think about uh, these rocks could possibly speak if we decide not to. But I'm going to encourage all of us today, especially our boys and girls, our kids. I want to encourage you that as much as you can, give praise to the Lord, just like what we did here this morning. So Jesus can hear us and the world can hear us. And so we don't have to turn it over to the rocks that they would do it. I want to lead us in prayer, and then whenever I do, after I pray, I have a special guest that's going to read my, my text this morning. So I want to have her, her read it here as soon as I pray, and then we'll switch over and let her read the text for this morning. So let's bow and have a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you, and 
Lord, we thank you for your love and we thank you for your grace. And Lord, as we are here this morning, I pray that you have received our praise. Lord, as we sing, uh, those that are home or wherever they may be, Lord, that they would be praising as well. And the Father, we did not just observe what was going on today, even in our homes with our families. Lord, we sing as a family. And Lord, that we would be able to give praise to you. And Father, now as we open your word, I pray, God, that you would uh, bless the reading of your word. I pray, Father, that you would bless the time of us sharing your word and that, Father, people could see their lives being changed and that, Father, we could continue to praise you so the rocks wouldn't have to cry out. Father, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's have the reading. Then, as he was now drawing near to the descent of the Mount Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory to the highest. And some of the Pharisees called him from the crowd, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. All right, thank you, Sarah. I appreciate that. Uh, her reading, reading the text this morning. And as we're reading out of Luke chapter 19, 37 through 40, this is the events that were taking place. And, and this on Palm Sunday, I, I believe that we need to now more than ever praise the Lord. And, and my friends, let the world hear us praise Jesus. In these times that are uncertain, in these times that people are struggling, in these times that, that life is just really basically out of control. My friends, listen, church, the world needs to hear us praise Jesus. And I'm excited that we have the opportunity to gather here on Sunday mornings and we have the opportunity to gather as Sunday school groups so that people can tune in and be a part of our praising of the Lord. The events that we see here that Jesus was coming into Jerusalem and he was headed toward the cross. Now the people there didn't know what was taking place. All they knew was that they had Jesus was coming in and man, they had been a part of everything that's going on and he was headed to the cross and the people were praising him. The people were proclaiming at that moment, Jesus as the Messiah. Now, I want us to understand that when we are praising God, when we here are praising, you know what we're doing? We're proclaiming. So today at your home or wherever you were, if, you were tuning, if you're tuning into this and you were singing along with us, you know what you were doing? You were praising and proclaiming Jesus as Savior. That's what the world needs to hear the church be doing, especially in these times. So I want to look at a couple of things today through this text about praising the Lord. The title of my sermon is The Rocks Cry Out. The Rocks Cry Out. Jesus had been telling them, if my people don't, if you stop them, that even the rocks are going to cry out. Because Jesus, as we look and see, deserves to be praised. Amen? Jesus deserves the praise. Whether it's by us or whether it's by creation, Jesus deserves this praise. As a matter of fact, Psalm 150 verse 6 says, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Then it ends with praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And then we all should say, praise the Lord. Jesus deserves that. And this is what we are called to do. And we praise him for all that he's done. And these folks, as they were, as Jesus was coming in that morning, the, a lot of people had been in one way or another experiencing what I would call the, the, the Jesus time, the Jesus excitement, if you will. And Je the Jesus experience, they had experienced him either by watching him do something great, they maybe even had something great done to them, or they at least heard testimonies, somebody telling them about how Jesus had changed their life. And so Jesus was there coming through, and this guy who they had seen do so much, and they were excited about having him come in, they were praising him and proclaiming him at that time as the Messiah, Jesus as the Lord. And so when we look then and we see that all of these people were excited and for not what only he has done, but we will also be excited for all that he will do. My friends, listen to me. We here today, if you're watching this today and you know Jesus as your Savior, you have experienced him in some way. 
Either you have experienced him through coming, coming to Jesus yourself. Or that you have experienced him by knowing someone or by tuning into these services. But what Jesus will do for each one of us, we know that he's done stuff for us. Now we look and we see, okay, now we know what he's going to do, what he will do. Now I want you to understand, these people were praising him more for what he had done than what he will do because they weren't sure what he was doing. They had the, they were confused about his intent. They were singing out Hosanna, Hosanna. Now Hosanna means save us. And so when he was coming into Jerusalem, they were, knew the things that he had done. Now they were looking forward to him saving them. But now their salvation was a little bit different than what we know was there. Their save us was calling out for Jesus to come riding into the city, take over the Roman Empire, to, to set them free from, from, from that slavery and that bondage that they had been with the Roman Empire. So they were wanting Jesus to save them in that way. My friends, listen to me. We here today know that Jesus' salvation is setting us free, but it's not necessarily from the things that, that we have going on around us. Jesus, when he sets us free, he sets us free from the laws of sin and death. And so we realize that and we experience that. We also know that he has set us free from that, but then also that we will praise him for what he is going to do. And what will Jesus do? What is Jesus going to do for his people? Well, listen to me. I want to tell you today that Jesus, what he's going to do for you, if you will call upon his name, and everyone in here that praise him, if we will call upon Jesus' name, here's what he's going to do. Through these very difficult times, I guarantee you, I promise you that he is going to comfort us. We know that. So we can sit here today, even in this situation, being kind of separated from everybody that we know, not being, having our life kind of shaken around a little bit. We know that Jesus is going to comfort us today. We also know that Jesus is going to guide us. Most of us don't have a clue what we're doing here. Amen? As a matter of fact, I, I hear people... They, they contact me and say, well, pastor, how are you navigating through all of this? My answer to them is, you know, I really don't know. As a matter of fact, most of the time we don't know how we navigated through something until we get through it. Amen. And we can look back and go, whew, I didn't do so well there. We think we're doing well now, but I didn't do so well there. Oh, we did all right there. But here's what I want us to understand. None of us know how to do what we're doing right now. We've never experienced this before. But the one thing that I know is that we can today give praise to Jesus for his guidance through it. If we will follow him, if we will pray and seek him, my friends, listen, he is going to guide us through this time. Not only will he guide us, but he's going to strengthen us. He's going to give us that whatever it takes to make it through these times. We can praise him even now knowing that he will do that for us. He is going to strengthen us, give us that energy. He is going to renew us. And he is going to allow us to mount up as wings of eagle and soar over all of this. That we have that strength today. We don't have to give up. We don't have to get discouraged. We can continue to move forward because we can praise him for what he's going to do. But also, my friend, he's going to encourage us. I mean, I know a lot of people that are frustrated. Amen. Sometimes I even get that way. And we're just saying, how much more? How much longer? Man, I'm tired of this. I'm ready to just stop. But if we'll praise him, if we will identify him as the Messiah, he's going to bring that encouragement to us. That when we leave out of here today, and we don't have a lot of contact with people. We get up tomorrow and we go through the day doing what we've been doing all the last two weeks. Sometimes it gets discouraging, but I'm here to tell you today, my friend, that if we will trust in him, if we will proclaim his name, Jesus Christ will encourage us even through these times so we can praise him for what he's done because all of us here today if you know jesus i mean you know the power that he's given you you know that he has saved you 
But you also know then what he will do, that he's not going to get us into these points and make it and just separate himself from us. He said, I'll encourage you. I'll help you. I'll guide you. I'll strengthen you. I'll give you everything that you need to do it. So we see Jesus deserves to be praised for what he's done, for what he's doing, and what he will continue to do in us. Amen? He deserves that. But we also see that he will be praised. Can I tell you today that Jesus Christ is going to be praised in one form or another? Do you know the world cannot stop him from being praised? As a matter of fact, I believe, now our leaders aren't doing it, but I believe that Satan has intended for Jesus to not be praised on Sunday morning so much. And by allowing this, the churches to be closed out, I, his intent was, okay, I'm going to stop the church from praising. Hey, can I tell you for sure that the internet is full of churches praising Jesus? Probably more than they've ever done. Do you know I believe today in America there's probably more people hearing about the gospel than they did a month ago. Jesus is going to be praised. We see here that what happened was the leaders desired to stop them. As Sarah read to us, we saw in that text, they came up to Jesus and, and men they were saying, Jesus, make them stop. Make them stop. They desired for them to stop because basically if they continued praising and if it continued the way it was, what would happen is their, their world would begin to unravel. Everything that they had built up, all of their prestige, all of their power, all of their authority as the religious Jewish leaders, all of that was about to be destroyed. You need to stop them because they're changing our lives. Because my friend, can I tell you this? When Jesus is praised, the world is shaken. The world shakes when Jesus is praised. I'm not talking about necessarily the earth. I'm talking about the world. The worldly attitudes are shaken. Power is disturbed when Jesus is praised. That's why they were wanting him to, to, to stop them. As a matter of fact, we even read in the book of Acts chapter 17, verse 6. It says, but when they did not find them, the leaders of that community were looking out for the apostles. They did not find them. The Bible says they dragged Jason and some brethren to the rulers of the city, crying out, those who have turned the world upside down have come here too. They were literally looking for these guys to get them to stop because they said they're turning our lives upside down. When we praise, when Jesus is being praised, the world is turned upside down. Our lives get turned upside down. But in reality, as I've shared before, our lives aren't turned upside down. The world isn't turned upside down. It's actually turned right side up. It was the way it was supposed to be. My friends, can I share with you this morning what we just did here with all these praises and what you are hopefully doing at your home or wherever you're watching this? Do you realize what you were doing was you were setting things in the right order? Because this is what we are supposed to do. We are supposed to be praising him. And so the world isn't going to get turned upside down. The system will. But the world will be turned right side up. So the rulers are saying, stop him. Stop him. But he will be praised. As a matter of fact, he'll be praised so much that Jesus didn't silence them. He wanted to hear that. He wanted that praise to come because he knew that as they were praising, they were focused on him and the things of this world were falling away from them. And Jesus said, I want you to cry out these things. Continue to pray. And here's what he told them. Proof that if we don't, Jesus will still get praise. He said, and as I shared with the kids just a few moments ago, he said that if they stop, even the stones would cry out. My friends, listen to me. Jesus is going to be praised. The praise of Jesus will shake this world up. And he's not going to be stopped. The praise will not be silenced. Oh, people might stop. But when he does... The rocks will take over. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 1, verse 20, it says, For since the creation of the world, His, Jesus, invisible attributes are clearly seen. How? They're clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. 
what God made in creation, they are a testament to who He is. The nature, the creation praises Jesus already. And it says that they praise Him in such an extent, in such a way, that they, that even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. People are going to be without excuse of receiving Jesus into their lives because even if people stop, even if the church stops, the Bible says the creation will take over. And even by creation will men know that there will be no excuse. The, cre the creation testifies about God's eternal power and about who He is. So if, if, if we... Continue to put Jesus up where he belongs. Praise the Lord, the world's going to be shaken. The systems are going to be shaken. But if we decide to even stop, creation will take over for us. Not only then does he desire to be praised and deserve to be praised, and we know he will be praised, but here's the third point. My friends, can I tell you this? We should praise him. It should be us. Amen? We are the ones that should be praising Him. Oh, listen. He deserves it, right? He deserves it for what He's done and His power and His love and all that. He deserves to be praised. We know that He will be praised. Oh, my, my, my prayer is, church, that we'll be the ones praising Him. That I won't turn it over to a bunch of rocks. I won't let creation have to be the one to testify about the power of God, the love of God, the goodness of God, that it'll be me. It'll be you. It'll be all of you watching. That we'll be the ones. And we'll be able to praise Him. First and foremost, man, we'll praise Him with our voices. We just, we've just been doing that, amen? When y'all were singing just a few minutes ago, and, and folks, when you were at home, were singing, I pray you were, you were participating. You were praising Him with your voices, with your singing. We should do it with, uh, with, uh, with not just our singing, but even our speaking. We should speak the goodness of God into people's lives. We could speak His Scripture. Hey, as a matter of fact, just very quickly, you're going to have an opportunity, and not just our members. Man, this is, this is open for anybody. If you've been looking on Facebook, and I've been announcing it, and I'm going to talk about it right here, what we're trying to do for Easter services next week is we're given what we call 10-second testimony. We want to receive 10 seconds of testimony. All we're asking, man, here, you, 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 you want to be better than a rock? Here's your opportunity. We want you to take your phone, and we know a whole lot of people can't say, oh, you can't say, oh, I don't like being in front of my phone. Yeah, you do. I'm seeing a whole lot of people there that's usually the center of the picture. Amen? Selfies, you know, we take selfies. All I'm asking you to do now is turn on the volume, hit the record button, and for 10 seconds, testify for the goodness of God and what He's done in your life. How has He changed you? For 10 seconds, you get an opportunity, to, again, to be better than a rock. And what we want you to do is if you'll go to our Facebook page and, or to our website, there's going to be a place that we, we want you to send that 10-second testimony. And what we're going to do is next Sunday during Easter, we're going to make a collage of all the 10 seconds of testimony. And here, here's the deal. You don't want to hear me preach a long time? Get a whole bunch of testimonies. Amen? You don't want to hear me talk a lot during Easter service? Send in your testimony. The more testimonies you have, the less time I have. Huh? Amen? It's a win-win. You get to praise the, praise the Lord, and you don't have to hear me speak. Ten seconds of testimony. We, you know what, folks? We should praise Him. As a matter of fact, we should be ready. As a matter of fact, I, I'm telling you, our, our webpage should be inundated with ten seconds of testimonies within, by, by the end of this day. Because you know what? We should praise Him. We should. We're giving you that opportunity. Man, again, it's not just for members of our church. Man, it's for anybody. If you're watching today, man, we want to hear from you. Just 10 seconds of what Jesus has done for you. 
pretty, pretty good stuff. Amen. So we praise him with our voices, but we also praise him with our bodies. Our bodies, we praise him by how we treat our bodies. The Bible says our bodies are a temple. We are to take care of this body. We are to not put it in situations where it can be harmed in any way. But not only how we treat our bodies, but what we do with them. The places that we put this body. Do you realize, church, do you realize that our bodies and our locations to where our bodies are gives a great testimony one way or the other for the power of God? There are places, can I tell you, there are places that Christians should not be placing themselves. Because we need to be praising the testimony of Christ. So we, we, we testify with our bodies, how we treat them, but we also, not only how we treat them, but what we do with them, where we place them, where we put them in, is a great testimony. But not only that, but with our lives. Our lives right now should be a great testimony to Jesus, giving Him the praise that He deserves by our attitudes. Folks, listen to me. I understand Sometimes in this situation, it gets tough to have a good attitude, amen? Sometimes our attitude, and especially in times like this, we got to be real careful because we could have some stinky attitudes, even as Christians. We could be moaners and groaners, complainers and whiners, amen? My wife, whenever our daughters and all of us would go places, she used to have a rule. No whining, griping, or complaining, and then it went on and said, if you don't embarrass me, I won't embarrass you. But let's go back to the first part. No whining, griping, or complaining. Folks, listen to me. Sometimes we as Christians can get to put in a category of the most complaining people. Might our attitudes, even in this difficult time, man, might our attitudes be proclaiming Jesus? Crying out, you are the Messiah, save us and save this world. But our attributes, not just our attitude, but our character. Do you realize that we proclaim the name of Jesus with our character? How people view us, how they see us, what they see us doing. Our attributes should be proclaiming Jesus. Man, my we, we as Christians should have a godly character about us. How we conduct ourselves and how we treat others and deal with others. That's how this all works. And so Jesus, as he came into Jerusalem that day, the people were shouting. The people were shouting. The leaders were saying, get them to stop. They're rattling our world. They're shaking us up. And Jesus said, even if they were to stop, the stones would cry out. Jesus, my friends, will be praised. You know why? Because he deserves it. He deserves it. And he needs to be praised by his people. Not, not the creation. So let's not turn it over to the rocks. Church, let's, let's keep us being the ones who they're praising. So maybe today you're here and you're saying, Pastor, I'm just not real sure that I have a lot to praise. Then maybe today you need to turn your life to Jesus and to be changed, to be saved, to allow Him to come into your heart. To literally change who you are and change what you've done and forgive you of your sins. Today, would you turn to Jesus? All you have to do is say, God, I know that I need you. And I ask you that you forgive me of my sins and you come into my heart and you change me. Save me, Lord, that I, that I can know who you are in my life. My friends, would you do that today? Would you do that today? And maybe you're here and you say, Pastor, I, I know I'm saved. But man, I, I, I've gotten directions all messed up. I've turned my life. I've, I've focused on other things. But today, Pastor, I, I just want to get my life right. 
Would you realize today that Jesus still loves you? He's never going to not love you. And all He desires is for you to come back to Him and, and to praise Him and, and, and call on His name. Would you do that today? Maybe there's others you need to be praying for. We're going to have that opportunity as well. We're going to do something that we've done the last few weeks. If you need someone to talk to right now, if, if you need someone to pray with you right now, we're going to encourage you to call right now. 536-4227. 580-536-4227. We have somebody sitting at a phone right now ready to receive your call, ready to pray with you, be an encouragement to you. Or my friends, you could call today and, 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 and come back and, and call the office this week or, or, or come by. We'll, our offices are open. We'll, we'll be visiting with you. Oh, that you would know Jesus, that you would know the peace and know the direction, know the purpose of what Christ has for you. 536-4227. Call right now. Somebody's going to be answering your call. Or come by this week. We'll, we'll be visiting with you. All but today that we would know and be able to praise Jesus because He deserves it. And folks, it's going to happen. Let us do it. So I'm going to ask you now, would you, would you join us again in some praise and worship? Maybe at this moment, as, as, as we're, we're going to ask you to sing with us again. But if that, if that's, if at this moment, there is something in your heart. Man, I want you to pray. I want you to pray this morning. I want you to come to Him this morning. I want you to turn to Jesus. But join us today. Let me lead us in prayer. And then these, they're going to lead us in a song. Would you sing with us this morning? And let's lift it up, man. Oh, let's lift him up. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. God, we thank you for your love and your grace. Thank you for bringing us together. And Lord, I pray that as we continue to sing praises to you right now, that God, if there's someone that's listening that needs you in their life, that Father, they would turn to you right now. Just call upon your name, seeking forgiveness of sin, coming in, asking you to come into their lives. Father, I pray that if there's someone that has you in their life, but Lord, they may have been distracted Maybe they, their attributes have not been proclaiming that of, G, of who you are. But Lord, that you would bring them back into your sweet fellowship today. And Father, I pray if there is someone that has a need, that God right now, they would call our office, speak to, to one of our people, to be able to, Lord, just to get things right in their lives, to know someone cares. So Father, here in the next few moments, now I ask that you receive our praise again. In Jesus' name, amen. Folks, we're just in here today. Hey, I, I want to thank you for joining us this morning, and I hope that God has spoken to your heart and He's been an encouragement to you. I want to encourage you to join us again next Sunday morning, 1045, right here on, on uh, our Facebook, uh, Facebook and our webpage, our YouTube. So we want to encourage you to come and uh, join us in worship. Also, remember that we have our Sunday school classes beginning at 9.30. There's, there are six classes, and you can go to our webpage and look them up, and then you can join right into one of those, um, uh, one of those classes, so we want to encourage you that. Also, we have, uh, that we've been doing the last couple of weeks, our, our Facebook Live show on Wednesdays at 6.30. We want to have you join in. We have some great fun with that, and we have some Bible study, some prayer time. and We always have somebody that we're talking to, special guests, and so uh, we want you to join in 6.30 on Wednesday. And finally, uh, remember our 10-second uh, testimonies that I talked about. Man, go go and look those up and, and film us one and send it to us, and then next Sunday we're going to have a great time on Easter Sunday. I want to also encourage all of our members and regular tenders. Uh, please remember that to support our church through, through not just prayers, but also through tithes and offerings that you could send those to us. We're not asking all of the guests who are watching for the first time, or maybe you're just now starting to join in. We're not asking you to support our church, but for our regular tithe, uh, members and regular tenders, we want you to continue to pray about supporting First Baptist West through your tithes and offerings as we still have ministries we're doing. Uh, we're, we're trying to... Con keep uh, some of the things going on that, that are have been going on. And so please be in uh, prayer about supporting us financially. You can send it through e-giving, through, uh, the, the, through the mail. You can uh, put it in the post office box or put it in our box out here. 
or you can drop it by. We'd love to love to visit you. And when you come in, we promise you we'll we'll keep our distance. Uh, even though we're excited when anybody new walks into our office now, man, it's a it's like a worship service when people come in. So uh, we just want you to stick around and, and come and be a part of what we have going on. All right. Well, let me lead you in prayer and then we're going to close again. Thank you so much for coming and being a part of our service with us today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. We thank you for this past hour of allowing us to just be here on this platform in this in this auditorium. But all those that are tuning in at, the, at home or wherever they may be, that, Father, that we could give you praise this morning. I pray for people's safety. I pray, Father, you would heal those that are sick. Protect those who are not. And Lord, let us use wisdom. Let us use wisdom in these, in these times, Father. That we could protect ourselves and protect others that we love. Lord, thank you again for allowing us to be here. Give us a great week as we preach and proclaim your name to a mighty world that needs you so desperately. Father, shake the world. In Jesus' name, amen.